Uh, hi, this is Rick Murphy with AllNet. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to join us today. Uh, on the line today, we've got uh, Rich Way from Bose, and Rich is going to talk to us about the new line of smart speakers. Uh, Rich, the floor is yours. Thank you, Rick. Uh, I wanted to uh, take just a minute to thank you guys for uh, coming and attending this. I know it's uh, it's money making time, but I'm going to make this very worth your while uh, so that you can go out, be better prepared in the marketplace and be uh, better able to install these products where appropriately uh, and to make the appropriate amount of money that you need to, which is a lot. Right. So we'll go ahead and get started. So um, we have products in the Bose family that help you sleep better hear better enjoy music at the at home on the go uh, in concert venues and in the world's finest automobiles uh, what you see on screen are just some examples of products that have real benefits that people truly love and we're always striving to make those uh, benefits better so there really isn't a, a company out there that's uniquely positioned um, today to, to offer a variety of products across a number of different categories to create one single ecosystem of cloud connected devices that will work together uh, to deliver even more powerful experiences. So today I'm gonna to discuss uh, these two topics. I'm gonna to share with you the new products for at home that just launched and discuss best practices around these sales engagement with these new products. And then by the end of our time together, you'll better understand how we're able to connect the dots between our products and our mission for creating powerful new experiences for our customers. So let's take a look at the at home category. So our at home products, they are evolving. Currently um, in the category of at home products, we include our SoundTouch family of Wi-Fi products, which you guys have been selling really well. And you know, millions of customers have been enjoying it since 2013 when we first introduced it. Um, today, I'm excited to introduce you an entirely new family of at home products called Bose Smart Speakers and Soundbars. So I'm gonna dive into these products in just a moment, but uh, let's dig a little bit deeper into the at-home category. So today we are offering two families of products that will fall into this at-home category, SoundTouch speakers and our newly announced smart home speakers and soundbars. So this is plus business. Now we can offer uh, your customers more solutions than ever before. So it's important to note, um, just as the screen shows, black and white, these are two distinct families. Bose smart speakers and SoundTouch products are not compatible with each other and they do not interoperate. Our SoundTouch product line of products rely on separate Alexa enabled product like a Amazon Echo Dot um, to deliver support with voice. Whereas the new family of Bose smart speakers and soundbars, they have Alexa built right in without the need for a separate device. So with our new products, we have cloud connected uh, product strategy uh, to be able to provide our customers with new experiences and values that is second to none. So our mission uh, is to have all of our consumer products cloud connected by 2020 to provide benefits that are different from what we've done in the past. Uh, what this does, it requires new software, new hardware, a new cloud connected infrastructure, and, and that is more capable of future and new experiences. Uh, and, and the SoundTouch product, uh, the hardware, the software, even the, the kernel of designing it just was not able to handle the direction that, the Bo that Bose is going. So that's why the new smart speakers and SoundTouch are not working together. But um, we will continue to sell SoundTouch. We're continuing to support it with both new, uh, both new products, families, and the SoundTouch device. So, you know, SoundTouch is gonna continue to get um, product updates, um, small features. While we're not gonna revolutionize the product line, um, it will still be doing um, operating system updates, um, bug fixes, uh, AirPlay 2 is one of the features we're going to be releasing next year um, to support SoundTouch. And, you know, it's not suddenly going to stop working. Therefore, um, SoundTouch will continue to remain a great solution for existing SoundTouch customers and for your customers that are not interested, interested in integrating virtual personal assistants. Uh, I'm sorry, virtual personal assistants, or what everybody calls VPAs. Everybody kind of clear on that? Um, I'll address any questions if anybody has it afterwards, uh, but I think you'll kind of get the gist of it as we as we move down the line. So um, let's talk about the strategy. Cloud connected uh, experiences, it's actually pretty difficult for us, right? So for example, you may have a customer that goes running wearing the SoundSport free headphones, and then they go to work using the QC35 Series 2 at work. Then, you know, just like everybody, they drive home in their Porsche Panamera, uh, with the Bose sound system. And then in the evening, they relax 
uh, using the SoundTouch 300 to enjoy some television. Today, uh, these are completely separate experiences, and we have very li little visibility into the relationship that exists between those products and the customer. So it's really hard for us to deepen our relationship with that customer. So this year across both hardware and software, uh, we're introducing a number of integrated solutions. So our Bose Cloud Connected product strategy starts off by giving us a single view of that customer so we can understand how our customers work with Bose and how we can add value to their lives and how we can do that even better. So um, that's the motivation for what we're trying to accomplish. So all of these new products will be integrated with Alexa. All these products will build upon our 30 plus years of experience developing microphone systems for demanding environments. And each of these products will deliver best in class audio from performance with an attention to detail that customers have come to expect from Bose. So these three things are given, right? But what makes these products special is our ability to look across these cloud connected devices in a single ecosystem. And this strategy will enable us to expand into the future. So now that you have a better understanding of the Bose Cloud Connected strategy, um, I'm going to show you what we're doing, what we're just launched. So in the home, common areas like kitchens are the most popular locations for smart speakers. Uh, they also happen to be the noisiest. You've got loud appliances, you've got echoes, you've got distance from the microphone and more. It makes it really hard for the microphones to pick up your voice. And you know, we shouldn't forget the most important part that directly below that microphone, um, speakers playing really loud. Today, loud music and voice pickup microphones, they're at odds. Uh, customers want Bose audio performance, but they don't want to sacrifice the high rate of speech intelligibility that they're accustomed to. I mean, engineering microphone systems for demanding environments, it's something that Bose does really well. We've built microphone systems for pilots and loud cockpits, uh, for military personnel and ground assault vehicles, to NFL coaches in packed stadiums with screaming fans. Clear communication can't be compromised in those situations. So our 30 plus years of experience in developing microphones and voice pickup, it's important because we now are going to offer a variety of smart audio products with Alexa built in that will keep you connected to your digital assistant. So voice pickup, the microphone system and your Bose smart speaker, uh, they'll become a critical part in trusting that you'll clearly be heard and understood when you speak. So this is the Bose Home Speaker 500, the best smart speaker for music. Many smart speakers simply contain Alexa, her voice, and her abilities, but we've given her a refined design that complements her personality. So for our first smart speaker, we're using specifically placed beam forming microphone arrays and echo cancellation to make sure Alexa responds to voices from across the room, even when the music is turned up loud. So in fact, our microphone system will pick up your voice at louder listening levels better than Amazon's current Echo products who have one less microphone. Our new acoustic structure is surprisingly counterintuitive when you look at it. Uh, when we were developing this, we went through, I think, 26 different uh, speaker arrays and configurations. And with this arrangement, with the left and right speakers pointing directly sideways and not forward, this was an un unexpected winner. And Bose QuietPort technology creates deep, clean bass and keeps the overall size of the product very, very small. So high frequencies that reflect off walls, delivering a remarkable stereo separation while bass evenly fills the room. And so that makes music more spacious and natural sounding than conventional side-by-side -side forward faking spacing speaker configurations. So the Bose Home Speaker 500 fills any room with impressive wall-to-wall -wall stereo sound from a single speaker with two custom drivers pointed in opposite directions to bounce sound off walls, and we've created a soundstage wider than any other smart speaker on the market. So because of this uh, configuration, this product is really small. At only six inches by four inches by uh, eight inches tall, it's seamless aluminum body and well-crafted design. They'll fit just about anywhere in your home. So if those that are familiar with our SoundTouch ecosystem, you're looking at something a little bit larger than the SoundTouch 10 with audio performance exceeding the SoundTouch 20. So here's a quick view of the rear of the speaker, one 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input. So there's no uh, hardwired ethernet port, but you'll be happy to know that all of our speakers now um, are 802.11 AC. 
So you're going to get fast, reliable wireless performance out of these products. So on the very top, volume up and down, microphone off. Uh, six presets and other responsive buttons provide plenty of control without cluttering the capacitive touch surface. In fact, one little unique thing that I uh, discovered is that microphone off button, um, for those that have security concerns or don't want Alexa listening every single time, you press that button, that actually is a hard circuit switch that is not software defeatable. So even if you unplug the speaker for six months, eight months, it's gonna plug, turn back on as muted. And you can press the little dot right above it to enable Alexa without having to use the wake word. It's a really, really cool feature for those that are security minded. I know my wife really doesn't like the fact that there's like 19 Alexa devices in the house now. Uh, so using our own design, the smooth light bar provides Alexa feedback such as listening, processing and talking in a really elegant way. So the display shows useful song information that's clearly visible even from a distance, as you saw in the first video. So we also have a central bar within a bar uh, of four RGB LEDs that we use to convey specific states, like uh, Bluetooth lights up blue. When it's ready to be programmed, it lights up amber. If there's an error, it, it lights up red. It's a really, really cool thing. Despite being a tiny design element, this light bar is a large part of the speaker's personality. So here are some additional features of the Home Speaker 500. You know, the first key benefits that you're gonna look for, spacious stereo sound, Amazon Alexa enabled, and built-in Wi-Fi music services, as well as Bluetooth. So smart speakers, they can help you take control of your music. So it's important for you to be able to take control of your smart speaker. Voice control is very, very simple, but it may not always be the way you wanna interact with the speaker. So we've developed a new app. The app allows for deeper exploration and more control of your music and product. And since there's no faster way to get personalized music, like a favorite playlist or streaming music, than by simply pressing the preset button on top. So we have a voice, app control, and touch. Simple, flexible controls that meet virtually every need. So the Home Speaker 500 uh, has two color variants. We've got Triple Black and Lux Silver. Both are available now uh, for 399 bucks retail. This is the most spacious smart speaker on the marketplace. So if the home speaker 500 is the best smart speaker for music, uh, what about movies and television? So movies like the new Star Wars, it should be experienced in a certain way with theater lifelike sound. A sound bar, it's a very simple way for many of us to make our living room sound more like a movie theater. So I'd like to introduce to you a new sound bar. This is the Bose Soundbar 500, the most remarkable soundbar in its class. Bose Soundbars combine performance and beautiful design with easy setup. They should also include the latest technologies. So competitors have offered a variety of tabletop smart speakers, but Bose will be the, among the first to directly integrate Alexa into a soundbar. So now you have all the benefits of a smart speaker and a soundbar design. So on the inside, we've positioned eight microphones, four on the left and four on the right, very specifically for the soundbar, so voice pickup is highly accurate. And our microphones automatically adjust their processing as necessary, depending upon whether you have it wall mounted or it's sitting on a, on a surface. And then Bose echo cancellation, it helps Alexa hear your words over the volume of the content that's playing. The thing that struck me really surprising, I saw this, I actually saw this for the first time at Cedia. Um, in a full live demo. And we were in the main hall of Cedia. There was thousands of people walking by this, this uh, display every single day. And it was probably around 12 feet off of the main hall, the main walkway. It was playing music and we had the um, two new sound bars side by side. As they were playing music, you could say with a regular speaking voice, Alexa, on top of everything else that's going, inside, going on inside of that convention hall and the music duct, Alexa light lit up and you could ask your question. And all of that has to pertain to how well we're doing this beam forming and echo cancellation. I mean, if the government trusts us to put our microphones into their helicopters, I think we're gonna be okay for your customers to ask to play Justin Bieber when they're listening to music. So on the outside, uh, or I'm sorry, on the inside, we've arrayed five newly designed full range racetrack shaped drivers. The three in the front, they power sound into the room while there are drivers on each side 
that sends sound to the sites for more spaciousness. And quiet port technology is inside of this as well, creating clean base within the small enclosure. Acoustic software like Adapt.IQ enhanced dialogue mode and dynamic range compression, they further help the hardware make all types of content sound its best. So we wanted to keep the bar compact and low, a design detail many of our competitors don't focus on. So at only two inches high, four inches deep, and 30 inches long, it's eight inches shorter than the SoundTouch 300 and a one inch uh, shorter as well at the top than the SoundTouch 300. So it disappears virtually invisible onto the television. Soundbar 500 maintains the look and feel consistent with our new design language. So instead of a glass top, it's kind of a matte plastic top on top uh, on the uh, very top screen. It's, it's very, very nice. Soundbar 500 alone is a great solution, but we've had such good success with our modular approach um, that we've included that in this system. So we, you can build a system that works for you. For example, you can add more bass by adding the Bose Bass Module 500. This bass module is identical to the one that's currently offered with the SoundTouch 300 in select clubs like Costco and Sam's. So at just 10 inches by 10 inches by 10 inches, the wireless Bose Bass Module 500 is noticeably smaller than the competitive offerings, but the sound is big with room filling um, with such a small footprint. And then for even more immersive experience, Virtual Invisible 300 wireless surround speakers, which were renamed the Bose surround speakers, they can be added. The Soundbar 500 makes everyday use, watching the game, listening to music, even the evening news more special. And what's not listed here is the uh, Bose surround speakers are now available in white as well. So while the beautifully designed SoundTouch 300 provides the best listening experience of any soundbar of its size, uh, this year we're gonna ask it to do a little bit more. So built on the SoundTouch 300 acoustic platform, this is the new Bose Soundbar 700. Alexa is now fully integrated into the best soundbar available on the market. So like the soundbar 500, uh, the eight microphones are placed precisely and a microphone processor happens automatically, whether the bar is placed on a table or mounted onto the wall. Our soundbar microphones are available are able to pick up your voice at much louder listening levels than the competition. So voice control is new and exciting, right? But just like the original, it's the sound and outward design that sets the Soundbar 700 apart from the competition. So if you guys have been on this webinar before, this probably looks very familiar, right? So four racetrack shaped drivers, full range drivers that have a low profile and strong bass. The dedicated tweeter produces high frequencies aimed directly into the center of the room for crisp, clear dialogue. On the sides, Bose phase guide radiators drive acoustic energy to the left and right to reflect off walls. So audio sounds wide and spacious. In fact, you'll even hear sounds where there are no physical speakers with this technology. So despite the addition of microphones, the bar's height didn't change. The Soundbar 700 looks great under your TV, on a credenza, or mounted onto the wall. And the metal grill and glass top stand out from the competitor's soundbars. And just a note on the mount itself, uh, the, it, the existing WB300 will work on this bar and the SoundTouch 300, which is still continuing. Um, there is a new universal bracket that will fit the SoundBar 500. So the SoundBar 700 is modular as well. It pairs to the Acoustamass 300 wireless base module, which we're renaming the Bose base module 700, as well as the Bose surround speakers for a more immersive experience. So here are the core benefits with some additional features of both soundbars. Um, core benefits are mainly our market leading performance, Amazon Alexa built in with superior voice pickup and integrated with both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The soundbar 500 remote uh, has basic functionality, right? Like volume, playback control, streaming music preset buttons. Um, if an owner wants more from the remote control, they can purchase the Soundbar 700 remote as an accessory and pair it to the Soundbar 500. So this is a really, really cool remote. I like it a lot. Soundbar 700 remote, it's, it's a universal remote and will control all the devices connected to your television. Uh, we've actually applied for a patent on a really cool detail called contextual backlighting, which means only the buttons needed for the control device illuminate. 
So when controlling the television, here is the button set. And then when you source switch to streaming music, this is your button set. The remote also syncs with the bar, so it's always in the correct state. For example, if you're using your app to initiate streaming music, the remote control will automatically switch to the streaming music source and button set, so it's ready if you pick it up. Simple, flexible control. So this is a Bluetooth remote. So one thing to note about these new soundbars is that like the lifestyle systems, uh, the IR code set for all of the devices are actually held in the bar. There's an IR blaster out of the front of the bars, as well as an IR emitter um, that you can uh, use out of the back of the bar to um, power remotely um, placed products like your cable box or your uh, Blu-ray player if they're hidden in a cabinet. So this does take place of an IR um, remote kit. Uh, as well as this being a Bluetooth remote, you don't have to point it to anything. Now, today, um, I believe tomorrow there will be an update that will allow you this to have full functionality. But as of today, if you were to purchase this and take it home and install it, uh, HDMI CEC is going to be the only control you have. Um, tomorrow, there will be a firmware update will, that will drop all the IR code sets into the bar to allow for full universal remote control. So Bose Soundbar 500 uh, retails for 549 bucks. It's available now. The Bose Base Module 500 is available now for $399. Then you can add the accessory remote for $49. So for $1,000, you have a universal remote, a soundbar, and a base module that is going to outperform almost anything in its class at this point. The Bose Soundbar 700, which has two color variants, are Bose Black and Arctic White has a retail price of $799. That is, uh, the SoundTouch 300, still available for $699. So the Home Speaker 500, the Soundbar 500, and the Soundbar 700. Uh, new products that blend our established experience in voice pickup, audio performance, and visual design with voice-powered intelligence. All of our uh, fall 2018 products and those that will follow are built on a new platform that allows them to work together a new ecosystem with compatible home and mobile products, an ecosystem that will let you decide how you'd like to access their features. So new devices, services, and assistance, they're coming every day. So uh, we may not make them today, but we're embracing the fact that we all enjoy different music and we have different devices and we have different preferences. So it won't matter whether you listen to Amazon Music or Spotify, uh, if you use iOS or Android or Samsung or Apple. Uh, will be service platform and device agnostic. So with our new Cloud Connector platform, we're going to be able to integrate the best software into our products faster and more seamlessly than ever before. So one thing I did want to note before we uh, move on, these sound bars and the base modules is, let's go back to this one here. The base module 500 is compatible with the SoundTouch 300, the soundbar 500 and the soundbar 700 in fact you can pair two base module 500s to any of those soundbars and you can pair two of the base module 700s to any of those products you really can build a modular a la carte system based on the needs of the customer the aesthetics and our uh, acoustics of the room um, that's giving you even more flexibility so let's go back to here now uh, at bose uh, we obsess over the details of both our products and our software. So as you can see, the level of detail we put into the hardware of this new family of smart speakers and soundbars, from the performance to the design, we didn't stop until we got the details just right. And the same holds true for our software. We put an incredible amount of energy into building the Bose Music app from the ground up, and you know I can't wait to show you. So the visually stunning and easy to use Bose Music app provides powerful control over the new family of Bose smart speakers and soundbars. The three key benefits of this app are powerful control, guided setup experience, and free software updates to get you the most from your product and access new features as they become available. So I'll take a moment and I'll review the Bose Music app. So with this app, you can easily browse through all of your music in one place and seamlessly jump between stations, playlists, and services. So compatible with other new Bose smart speakers and soundbars, you can play the same music in every room or different music in different rooms. So the app makes it simple to set presets so the music you love is just one touch away. 
the coolest part about this is that uh, we got a lot of requests to have more than six presets, right? Um, what if there was somebody else in the house that wanted a different set of presets? With this, multiple users in a household, they can personalize their experience and control their content like never before. So one person can quickly access their Spotify playlist while another easily listens to the latest podcast. And so now with multiple user profiles, it's simple for the whole household to enjoy their favorite music and more. And plus, there's even guided prompts to make setup easy, walking you through each step. So the father of the house walks in, opens up his Bose app, selects the home speaker 500. His presets are now on the uh, six preset buttons, right? And so when the son comes home, he opens up his app and selects the home speaker 500. Those presets now change to his favorite presets. And those presets are dedicated per speaker, per user. So if you have a home speaker 500 in the bathroom and you would like to listen to uh, a certain type of music in the bathroom, like when you're taking a shower, uh, then you go into the living room, a different set of playlists that are available on that next speaker. So you have a very large amount of presets based on the room, based on the user. So like I said, a global user account, and that will connect you to a single view of my Bose. Um, so we, today we have a number of different apps across multiple platforms, Bose Connect for head headphones, uh, Bose SoundTouch for multi-room audio. Uh, moving forward, uh, we're gonna offer exclusively a new single Bose music app that will manage your ecosystem and bring you more value to your products. So now that you can see what Bose Music App can do, um, I want to transition to show you what Alexa can do inside of that. So because Alexa is constantly evolving, it's not possible to provide a comprehensive list of her supported features. However, it's reasonable to expect that our integration of Alexa uh, supports the vast majority of Alexa functionality, including music playback, control of smart home devices, setting timers and alarms, and general information requests. So there are some things you may want to try when you get it. So now when you want to play music, you don't have to say an invocation phrase like Alexa ask Bose to uh, and the room name. So for example, when you're talking to a home speaker 500 that's named Kitchen, you can simply say, Alexa, play my dinner playlist instead of Alexa, play my dinner playlist in the kitchen. But you do have to say that if you're talking to the kitchen and you want to control something in a different room. So you would say, Alexa, play my dinner playlist in the family room while you're talking to the kitchen. So with this new family of smart speakers and sound bars that feature exceptional audio performance, voice control, and the latest technologies, uh, premium materials, you may be wondering what's the value proposition for new and existing SoundTouch customers? In other words, why sell or own SoundTouch anymore? So customers, they have a variety of options available to them, uh, but choose Bose SoundTouch in large part because of the audio quality. So not only do we have a solution for every room, but we also provide incredible performance by applying over 50 years of research and designing innovative technology and products. To our SoundTouch systems, they feature a classic design and have the largest assortment of Wi-Fi music systems in the market today. So by continuing to offer SoundTouch products, we have the ability to target late adopters of wireless speakers who value high quality sound, ease of use um, that's enabled by proven technology and lower price alternatives. So these qualities may also be attractive to customers who live in countries where Alexa and other voice services aren't yet available. So SoundTouch products also enable us to meet the need of you guys and, and your customer base with our works with Bose certified control drivers. So these new products do not have an API. Uh, so if you're going to be using Control 4 or RTI, AMX or Crestron um, or Alon, you're going to want to stick with SoundTouch. So when it comes to existing customers, keeping SoundTouch in the marketplace enables us to fulfill a promise to provide best-in-class service and support over the life of our products. So you know we are very thankful for the 3.1 million customers who chose to invest in this generation of wireless speakers. So while there are no major updates planned, we will continue to support SoundTouch for years to come with incremental software enhancements. So uh, on screen, you can see the differences between the two ecosystems, the new family of smart speakers and soundbars and SoundTouch family of products. So I mean, for instance, if you wanted a introduction into multi-room audio, uh, our 
least expensive option is going to be 400 bucks. So if you've got a customer that wants a sound bar and a second room of audio and doesn't want to break the bank, you can buy a SoundTouch 300 sound bar and pair a SoundTouch 10 to use in the kitchen. If they want to, uh, if they don't want Alexa integration, or if they want outdoor speakers, or if they want a home theater system that doesn't, that isn't a sound bar, a true dedicated 5.1 system, they're going to stick with SoundTouch. So we are offering great solutions from two separate families of home speakers for sale at the same time. I understand this is going to be a little confusing on the front end, but um, they each operate from a different app. The smart speakers use Bose Music app, SoundTouch will you can use the SoundTouch app, and our goal is to help the customers find the best solution that fits their needs. So it's up to us to understand the customer's needs in order to identify the right product or family for them. And this means a proper needs assessment must be done, right? So uh, let's discuss the positioning around these two product families. So to avoid confusion, present all of the home speakers under the at-home family first. This will help customers understand the differences between the two options. So then sell uh, smart speakers and let it's clear sound touch is a better fit for your customer's needs. So built in Alexa, it is the most powerful differentiator between the two families. In non-Alexa markets, the smart speakers have the ability to include voice control when it becomes available. So remember that uh, consumers shop by use case. They differentiate SoundTouch through broader product portfolio, multi room applications, uh, less expensive barrier to entry. Um, and if you're going to do anything custom, let's stick within SoundTouch. So if I can say it as easily as possible, um, let's keep the Bose Music ecosystem, keep that for new customers, uh, dealers that want to just install it and be done and they're not going to be integrating with other things at this point um, and if you have anybody who's interested in multi-room anybody who wants an amplified solution using Bose 791 speakers um, then they're going to be wanting to be uh, sound touch now going in the future we can discuss other things that will come through but for today and for this family of products uh, SoundTouch is still going to remain our CI line of products, while Bose Music is going to be our, our smart solution. So today, I share with you these two topics. In the beginning of the presentation, I shared the new fall products as well as the new Bose Music app, and we discussed different sales engagement scenarios for the two at-home family of products. So I hope you now have a better understanding of our strategy and the way forward as we provide customers with more solutions than ever before. So we're going to make our mark in the industry through a combination of innovative software and hardware. Our new cloud-connected platform, it enables us to integrate the world's best software faster and more seamless than ever before, while creating a personalized experience for our customers. So engineer with precision craftsmanship uh, will have arguably the best sounding speakers and soundbars available. And we've leveraged 30 years of experience to develop proprietary beamforming microphone arrays and echo cancellation tech that makes sure our products outperform the competition. So in addition to voice control, we have a new app designed from the ground up, plus simple touch controls that enable you to customize your products for those moments when it's quicker just to tap a button. So with SoundTouch and our new smart speakers and soundbars, we're able to reach a broader audience of wireless speaker customers and those who value multi-room and lower price alternatives and those who prefer the, own a, the latest technology and voice powered intelligence. So I'm excited to launch the best sounding Alexa speakers and they quickly become the best smart speaker solutions on the market for customers who value freedom of choice. So I hope you guys are excited as I am to bring these products to market as we take a few big steps toward making all of our products cloud connected by 2020. So Bose products that can be found in a variety of categories at home, on the go, wellness, professional, and automotive. And imagine a day where your Bose hardware can interconnect, where all of your Bose products can talk together because they're all linked together in the cloud. Our core customer electronics products will lead the way. The future is really bright, and I'm excited to provide uh, our customers with freedom of choice and value that's second to none. Thank you guys very much. All right, thanks, Rich. Thank you. Let me see. I've got a couple questions that came in. Um, can you go back to the slide that shows the 
the speaker ecosystem. And thank you for clarifying the modular approach because that was going to be one of the questions. Uh, the the SoundTouch ecosystem or the new? I'm smart? sorry, no, the new, the new products. And, and uh, you were discussing that we could use either base module with either soundbar. Now it's with all three soundbars, correct? Yeah, all three soundbars. The SoundTouch oh, nice. soundbar as well as the um, two new home speed, uh, soundbar 700 and soundbar 500. Okay, I think go back like one more. Right there, okay. So the new guy here, the base module 500, this is one that our channel has never had before, correct? Correct, this is brand said, new for, for our said channel. it was only available, it wasn't even available retail, it was only a club model prior to? Okay. It was only a club model paired with the SoundTouch 300 soundbar. Yeah, I remember I remember we had a couple of questions about it when it showed up at the, at the clubs and you said it was a totally different base module. So the price point is really, really amazing. What is, What's in this? Uh, what's in this box? I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit. Oh, um, what's the driver complement in this thing? Um, the, I believe it is a five and a quarter inch driver inside with a oh. folded port. So there's there's a lot of base performance out of this little out of this little guy. In fact, okay. um, I would say an ideal setup if you're um, if you've got a customer on the on the hook, right? And they buy a, a soundbar 700 and they want a little bit more base response. You could get a Bose base module 500 and then put that into the home. And if they ever wanted to expand it, you could provide a second base module 500 and have a really good solution um, with two base modules for probably less uh, entry than the um, one of the base module 700s. Okay. And the other application that I immediately saw is since it's shorter and smaller, you Sorry, could probably do two of them. Yeah, you could do two of them. Do two of them instead of uh, the like the old the old 300 base module that's now what is it called this base module 700 base module 700 yeah and and if you have a base module uh, I'm sorry uh, Customass module 300 uh, yeah. that will pair with these because like I said the base module 700 is simply renamed it is the same product okay and the same with the uh, the, the virtual invisible surrounds. Now Correct. they're just called Bose surrounds. Bose surrounds, and now it's available in white as well. Okay. Um, so one of our ne next questions comes up about uh, subwoofers. If a customer already owns a wired subwoofer, uh, can that be hooked up to the soundbar, or does it have to be the ecosystem's product? Are you talking about a third party? Yeah, let's say they've got you know Velodyne or an e episode or something that they've already that they already own. Uh, yes, they would have to use one of these base modules because inside of here, okay. there's a um, you can actually hardwire this with a standard 3.5 stereo cable. Um, and if you hooked up two of them, you just simply get a headphone splitter and provide a double wired solution. But because of the uh, acoustics crossover and power, um, it's looking for these specific base modules. All right, thank you. All right, so um, Dana's asking for some more detail about the uh, the wall mounting. And then also, will there be a, a dedicated um, accessory mount to hang this below an articulated um, flat panel installation? So the, uh, the wall mount is just a smaller variant of the existing WB300. So it's still the, the two L brackets uh, with a paper template that you can mount onto the wall and make sure that's level, screw it in, rip it off and mount it directly. There is uh, screws um, or th uh, threaded nuts below the soundbar that it, that it rests on. So it's a simple screw to connect it. And there is no dedicated um, uh, soundbar mount outside of the sound extra uh, system. Uh, and I believe that is only available, uh, I think general public over the UK and you can get it off of Bose.com. But uh, if you're looking for like a Santa's mount solution, um, you can utilize uh, typical soundbar mounts. I, I believe Santa's has a solution. In fact, I'm using it downstairs on my television. Um, I'm not sure if Snap offers something like a universal soundbar mount as well. Yeah, we, um, we definitely do. So like in the case of, of the existing product, we would bolt 
the Bose wall bracket to that, and it would just be a two-piece solution, but it's still rock solid. So you're saying this would move forward in the same method that the current one does? Correct. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, so Matt said that he uh, he missed the very beginning, and he wanted to know about the multi-room audio. Um, if you could clarify the difference in multi-room audio for our Sound Touch versus the new Smart product, in terms of like how many how many streams are uh, possible, how many rooms are possible, et cetera. If the same technology applies. Uh, it's really dependent upon the network. Um, if you've got wired solutions with the sound bars, there really is not a limit of how many you can use. Um, just how much bandwidth is going to be used. Um, these new products are 802.11ac, so you're getting a lot better wireless performance out of these than you would have gotten with the SoundTouch product. Um, there is no limit, um, but because we only have three products, I think the um, if you wanted to outfit a house with sound bars and home speakers, um, then you'd be absolutely fine specifying this. But if you wanted a true multi-room experience with a lot of different accessories, you know, because we have wave radio, um, small, medium, and large tabletop units, an amplifier, a pre-amplifier, a home theater system, sound bars, um, under the SoundTouch line, uh, you're going to have a lot better success outfitting the appropriate products in a multi-room environment with SoundTouch than these products right now. You know, eventually down the road, we probably will have those variants, but until that product comes out, your, your best bet in a multi-room audio experience, um, you know, outside of these three solutions is going to be specifying sound touch. Okay, thank you. And then Matt followed up about the um, the sound touch models, and these models are not compatible in the same installation. So yeah, that I believe that's correct, Matt. You want to elaborate, Rich? Yeah, that is correct. Uh, right now, they are completely separate um, ecosystems. They use a different app. Uh, the um, there will be advancements coming later, like AirPlay 2, uh, where you may possibly be able to integrate them both over uh, using AirPlay 2. Uh, but that SoundTouch and Bose Music probably will not see those until um, earlier next year. So okay. as of right now, if you have is so if you've got one customer that has a SoundTouch 300 soundbar, right, and they really like the new home speaker 500. And they're not really using the SoundTouch soundbar as a um, SoundTouch product, but more of a, a soundbar. Then, yeah, you're you're perfectly fine having those two ecosystems if the correct expectation is set with the customer. Um, but if you've got someone who has six or seven, or like me, you've got nine SoundTouch devices in the house. Um, unless that expectation is set that these speakers will not talk to each other in a multi-room environment, then uh, you would need to stick to um, you, the respective ecosystem that you're going to lead with. Sure. So, like the the primary downside is that you couldn't syn synchronize them. So, if you wanted to play one playlist across every speaker in the house, that can't be done unless everything sound touch or everything smart. Correct. It has to be one or the other. Okay. Perfect. All right. And then um, uh, we had another question that came through about the integration. And now you said the API is only available on the SoundTouch product, correct? So if uh, this particular dealer is asking about RTI, he's an RTI guy. Um, so if he wants to integrate anything, he needs to stick with SoundTouch. Is that the correct answer? Uh, that is semi-correct. Uh, so as of today, there is no APIs developed for these new products or to have IP control. Um, if you wanted to control the soundbar um, over IR, then those those IR codes are the same as the SoundTouch um, soundbar codes. But if you're looking for an elegant IP controllable solution, SoundTouch is where you need to be. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so Michael asks, um, during the uh, section on Alexa integration, uh, you said that most Alexa capabilities are available. Um, anything notable that's missing that you can comment on? So the only things that are, are really not available are things that are um, echo exclusive. So, you know, like dropping in the, the echo to echo calls that you can call your, your dad um, who lives in a different state, or you can drop in on a um, different uh, Alexa device in the, in the room. I do not believe that those are available 
Um, and that's just the Alexa platform. They, they want those devices as Echo devices only. Uh, but when it comes to control and you know third-party control of, of devices and everything like that, that absolutely is still there. But those Alexa exclusive things, um, those are going to be only available in Echo products. Does that okay, make sense? Thank you. Absolutely. All right. So Dana is asking um, a follow-up question on her mount. So I assume she was talking about the sound bars. She's actually asking if there's a mount for this uh, for the new uh, Home 500 speaker. Uh, there are some manufacturers working on one, but there is nothing out of the box. Okay. All right. Thanks for right now. Thanks for thanks for that. Okay. Let me see. If you know of a manufacturer that would like to make one, then <laughs> get in touch with me, rich underscore way at bose.com. Oh, um, one additional thing I wanted to mention to you guys. Uh, the uh, Bose Learning Hub has all these products and kind of the fast fact sheet. So boselearninghub.com, if you do not have access to that, uh, get in touch with Rick or myself and I'll make sure to get you uh, login credentials uh, if you are a Bose authorized reseller. Nice, thanks Rich. Okay, so Jonathan has a follow-up question about the 700 specifically. So um, do you anticipate that IP control may come? Um, he said it's hard for customers not to want the better quality product, like maybe uh, the new Smart 700 over the current SoundTouch 300 but uh, not if it's gonna be at the expense of uh, control and operability. Oh yeah, we're, we're definitely working on um, APIs for that. In fact, uh, I probably shouldn't say this since it's being archived, but I'm gonna say it anyway, because I like to go rogue. Uh, no, we were, we were originally going to have the APIs at launch, um, but there were some manufacturers that, not all manufacturers wanted to develop them as quickly as we wanted. Um, and so they will have, we were having APIs developed uh, they're just not available yet. Okay, thanks. Yeah, Rich, go rogue. You know, <laughs> get in the <laughs> hot water. Jump in the hot water. Um, let me see what else. Oh, James wants to know if we can put the 700 soundbar back up on the screen and um, just give it a, another quick review. Oh, it is on the screen. I got the questions thing over my screen right now. So, can you uh, hit your bullet points on that one again? So the Soundbar 700, let me pull up the... Uh, Specifically comparing it to the 300. So comparing it to the 300, it is identical. Uh, the only difference, uh, the main difference between the Soundtest 300, which is on display, which is there, and the Soundbar 700 is the fact that we added Alexa. Uh, on the back panel, which I, I should actually have a picture of the back panel, but I don't, um, acoustically and design-wise, it is identical. We added the light bar, the eight microphone arrays, as well as IR blasters um, to control third-party devices. Uh, on the back side, um, we got rid of the extra HDMI port. So it's now just one single HDMI input, not an HDMI pass-through, uh, because we recognized that there was only like 1% of people who were actually using that second HD, that additional HDMI port. And so we got rid of that, made the, um, uh, still hardwired connection, still HDMI input, still optical input. Um, we still use AdaptIQ. Uh, from design elements, it's the same. Okay. And then um, can you review the, uh, the the price point differences and then with the um, the recommended sub, the sub is now being renamed the 700. Uh, is it the, this, the price... The price point of the subwoofer is the same as it's always been, correct? I'm sorry, yeah, the base the, module. The Acoustamass 300 was 699. The base module 700 is now 699. So the pricing hadn't changed, just the part number. The SoundTouch 300 soundbar is $699. That is not changing. Uh, the soundbar 700 price does go up by 100 bucks. So it's now 799 but you do get a, a really slick universal remote. You get integrated Alexa control and the new ecosystem. Okay, thank you. Um, I've got one more question here on soundbars and then I wanna to go to that remote because um, I've got a couple of questions that came through about the remote and then I'm also very curious myself. Yeah. Um, 
So all the sound bars are now uh, HDMI ARC and CEC compatible, correct? Correct. It's actually eARC now. What's the difference there? Uh, eARC, I believe the difference is able to pass higher codecs like um, uh, Dolby Atmos and higher res um, audio streams. Um, that's for future integration. Okay, thank you. It's just a little bit more stable as well. Stability is always good with, with anything yeah. related to HDMI. Yes, and from from my experience and real world practice, if you guys are using Video Matrix, I mean, I don't really need to tell you guys. You guys have been doing this all the time. But if you're using a Video Matrix, if you're using a, a HDMI splitter, if you're using a switch, um, CEC is not going to be reliable in those instances. CEC is designed for television to bar, television to cable box. Uh, that is where it's going to shine. If you're using a whole home distributed video system, um, ZEC is going to be kind of a nightmare just because there's so many handshakes and so much control that it wants to give out, uh, that, which is why we have the optical cable. Okay, perfect. All right, so what's the deal with the remote? The remote is um, quite awesome, actually. Uh, so this is the Soundbar 500 remote. Very basic, it's an IR remote control. It controls the television, Bluetooth, and sound, to, or, sorry, uh, Bose Music off those six presets. Um, basic functionality, the thought is that your, your remote um, Comcast cable or your universal remote will take control of it. But if they wanted to, they could use the Soundbar 700 remote, which is paired with the Soundbar 700. It's a $49 accessory item they can add to this, and, the, and uh, this is a Bluetooth remote that controls the sound bar. Uh, it also controls our universal devices like television, uh, Blu-ray, cable box. Um, I see a gaming input, but because the IR codes haven't really been released uh, as of today, I don't know what that's going to actually control, considering it is a Bluetooth remote. Um, but it's contextual backlighting. So when you press TV, um, all of your button sets will show up that are pertinent to that pertinent to that television. And then when you switch to uh, streaming music, these buttons will light up. And so it traces, uh, it follows the uh, soundbar, follows the app, and, and the states that those are relative in. Does that make sense? It does. So and you, you just set that this up during uh, initial setup of the app. Okay. And, and if you, you guys said, would like to see more, please come to the in uh, store training uh, happening later this month in your respective Allnet branch. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that, Rich. Um, I'll get to that in just a moment. Um, but yeah, the, qu the question, I guess, is uh, you mentioned that it would have um, the ability to control out through the CEC channel. So the remote is going to be able to execute commands to the to the TV or the display through the CEC. Yes. Okay. Um, and anything and then, not CEC enabled, it will uh, it will have IR. So there are IR blasters out of the front of the bar, and there's an IR emitter port um, at the back of the bar. Okay. And and the code sets for the popular cable boxes, you know, Directv, Dish Network, that type of stuff are we're expecting to see those in, in there at, at launch. Um, they will be there uh, tomorrow with a firmware update. Okay, so I guess we have to wait for <laughs> uh, some firm information. Um, what about the uh, the little source boxes like uh, Roku Ultras, Apple TVs, things like that? Uh, do you believe that they're in there either as uh, IR control or IP control? Uh, well, IR does this have the? Yeah, okay, perfect. And, we're, and, and the reason why we're doing that is uh, like the lifestyle systems currently, uh, lifestyle systems hold all the IR information in the console and it gets updated about every other week, right? With the new products that come through, we learn those code sets, we get them from the manufacturer and we load them into the lifestyle system and we send all that down through a firmware update. These sound bars are gonna utilize that same tech. So we're gonna have, we're gonna host all of the IR codes on the cloud and when you're going through the setup of the universal remote through the app, you'll be able to say that you've got a Comcast uh, cable box. And when you go through and select it, it will say, all right, so we'll test it. Does it work? Yes, so now it's done. So instead of having to 
press and hold the TV button and wait for the lights to blink and then enter a, a code family and then volume up and menu. Um, it's kind of a manual process. It's all done over the app. Okay, thanks. So I guess that's, a, that's the next question is um, programming and setup. Is it also going to be done through the app or is it going to be done through like an on-screen GUI or uh, it's all browser? Uh, yeah, okay. it's all done through the app and I'll be, um, I'll be showing you guys how to set that up uh, during the live demos. Um, but the setup is super simple. Uh, you can set up a home speaker 500 and a soundbar 700 in less than five minutes. I mean, both of them can be set up in less than five minutes. It utilizes a uh, low power Bluetooth to find the speaker and then that will transmit the uh, Wi-Fi code, you enter the Wi-Fi password, it will register device, it will sync it, you can then make it public or private if you want to make it just for you or if you want to let anybody who came onto the network to see it. And then you enable Alexa, you're done. Very, very simple process. And it's all done through the app. All right, thanks, Rich. So I've got the flyer here, so I, I can go over the dates for um, So you're, you're in Elk Grove and in Minnesota next week, correct? Correct. Okay, what are the dates for those two sessions? So the, let me pull that up really quick. Okay. The reason I don't have it in front of me is we made two separate flyers. So the flyer that I have in front of me is for uh, Troy, Michigan, the branch that I'm sitting in currently. Uh, we're going to have Rich here on October 23rd, uh, 9 to 11 a.m. or 1 to 3 p.m. And then two days later, October 25th, we'll have Rich in Carmel, Indiana, uh, down with the Kevins. And I'll be in Elk Grove Village on the 16th. And I will be in Edina, Minnesota on the 18th so that's actually in two weeks oh okay so tuesday the 16th in you said edina elk oh elk tuesday grove. the 16th elk grove okay thursday the 18th in minnesota mm -hmm. and then the following week we're going to have uh tuesday the 23rd here in michigan and then thursday the 25th in carmel indiana i think the dates are i'm sorry the time slots are the same uh, for the local time, uh, 9 a.m. to 11 for the morning or 1 to 3. And then as always with all that trainings, we always, uh, we always bring in a nice lunch. So yeah, hopefully if anyone on the, on the call interested in uh, seeing these products and learning more about this stuff, um, come out and meet Rich. Rich is an interesting fellow. Also, uh, for those of you in Michigan, uh, reach out to us, either reach out to Tim or myself. Um, Rich was kind enough to find us some uh, football tickets for the Lions games. Uh, we've got a uh, Seahawks game coming up and we're doing a uh, uh, drawing for anyone who gets in on this uh, buy one, get one 50% deal. So if you have a need for a uh, soundbar, have a need for a table speak, the, the new smart 500 table speaker. Um, if you do any of the product, buy one, get one, we'll put your name in a hat and we'll draw and we'll give you a four pack of tickets to go see the Seahawks. So other markets might have other promotions. I'll let them speak to that. So reach out to your sales manager, and uh, if you're if you're outside of Michigan, if you're within Michigan, call me or call Tim. So Rich, I think we're I think we're th through with this. I think we went through all of these. We got through all the questions pretty clearly. Um, eagerly anticipating more updates on this remote. Uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be. It, it, I mean that that remote is going to be a really cool seller. Um, come standard in the 700 and accessory for the 500. Uh, I, I have used it a little bit uh, in its limited capacity with CEC and it's been working fantastic. Um, but yeah, when that, that new firmware updates uh, tomorrow, it's gonna be you know, a really, really cool solution for you guys. Okay. And do you see that like the, uh, some, of these new, some of these new remotes, it seems like they don't have to have a billion different functions and like uh, 72, uh, 72 command macros anymore because we've got things like voice control. So it seems like like remotes have gotten a lot 
easier to use nowadays. So I'm kind of glad that we're, we've got some more companies that are deciding to get back into the, the universal remote game and, and make something because not everyone needs a thousand dollar remote kit, especially not for a thousand dollar soundbar and speaker setup and a fifteen hundred dollar TV. You know, a thousand dollar remote is kind of overkill. Yeah, I mean, if you if you think back to our history, right, when you would do a lifestyle system back in 2007, it would be a you know days long process of doing a rough in, doing a trim out, getting all that uh, done, and then programming every single room in the house. You know, you'd be there for hours, right? And with these new systems and the way they they operate, you can set up a three zone audio system in 15 minutes and be out the door making the profit that you should be making and being able to move on to the next thing. I mean it. Um, the the state of the industry right now is in change but i mean to be able to walk in walk out and still make profit on these products that are um you know there a lot of products a lot of manufacturers are making them marginalized you know and, and becoming commodity items where partnering with bose and partnering with allnet you're able to make the profit that you need to keep the lights on be able to come home at the end of the day and not be stuck at a job site till two in the morning trying to figure out which wires and trace the correct way. You know, there's there's um, beauty in simplicity. And if you are able to sell this correctly and to get these things integrated, you're going to make yourself a lot of money. You're gonna make your customers really happy. And, you know, it's not, you know, we all can have the nomenclature of what Bose is perceived in this marketplace. But the fact that we've got millions and millions of customers that are buying Bose products and that are enjoying Bose products uh, if they're asking for it, or if they want a simple solution, this is going to be your simple solution with really good profit margins and a brand name that is almost second to none. And the, the thing that I always mention when someone's, you know, kind of on the fence and considering offering bows is that the return rate on bows for defects is minimal. It's easily amongst our lowest lines, certainly amongst our lowest audio product lines. Um, this stuff just doesn't break. It's it's engineered very well, built very well. The fit and finish is very high. So, and, and like you said, Rich, the um, the the profit opportunity is is guaranteed because if if anyone is uh, if anyone's you know manipulating pricing, you know, let us know. They'll be reported, and they'll likely that'll be their last Bose product that they're allowed to buy through legitimate wholesale. Uh, channels. So the product is, um, it, the, the distribution of the product is monitored very closely. And, you know, we want everyone to be profitable offering the product. So, you know, we don't always have that with, um, with a lot of other products. And, you know, it, you know I'm not going to throw shade, but if, uh, you know, if, if you're offering sound bars from a video manufacturer, you know, that, the, the profit opportunity just they're just not there and they 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 change direction faster than a windsock in a hurricane so <laughs> you know the, oh i can make four hundred dollars on this soundbar today oh the price just changed so for two weeks i can only make ninety dollars on it and then you're it's up and down with the bows it's consistent day in day out pitch it sell it pitch it sell it you make the same profit on each one each time and that's why we have agreements so our agreements uh, with between Bose and you as a reseller um, to, to buy products from Allnet, um, list the uh, suggested retail price, and uh, you can look through the terms and conditions to to find out what the what the details of that is. Um, but I would recommend before uh, checking any pricing to read over that that dealer agreement. Okay. Yes. Oh, Rich, we did have two more questions that came in. I didn't scroll down any further. Um, so James wants us to review the promo once again, and also which models are eligible and which models are not eligible. So all of the new products are eligible. So um, we're doing a, a one to show, one to go promotion for the month of October. So the Home Speaker 500, the Soundbar 500, and the Soundbar 700 are buy one, get the second at 50% off. So you can buy a white one and a black one and get the get the second color 50% off. You can, uh, that also applies to the surround speakers, that applies to the base module 500 and the base module 700, as well as the accessory remote. Okay, so the new products announced, buy one, get the second at 50% off. 
So even though the uh, two of these SKUs, the surround kit and the base module 700 are repurposed products or are renamed products from the existing line, if someone buys like a sound bar, any of the sound bars buy one, get one, they're allowed to do the, uh, the either base module or I guess both base modules if they wanted, they can buy one to show one to go of all SKUs, correct? Yeah, up to one, one, to one of each. Okay. Yeah, every the new SKU sound touch uh, products still. If you wanted to uh, purchase it to put it on display, we still have the twenty five percent off uh, your cost promotion, and that's a standard promotion for all of our products. Um, but for okay. this promotion, if you're going to be buying product, buy one and get the second one at fifty percent off, and, and put that in your showroom. Okay. And then uh, Wayne has a question, and I think this has already been addressed, but I'll let you. Um, Review it again. Um, anything with the new smart line that will allow uh, existing in wall or in ceiling speakers, or um, like the 591, 791 uh, class of uh, architectural product? Not yet. Okay, so currently they still have to, like an SA5 would be the, the SA5 and sticking with the Sound Touch ecosystem would be the correct way to, to go if you've got architectural speakers in a house and you yeah. want to use Bose for audio. That would be correct. So um, you know, just to reiterate, these products, because we're a privately owned company and because we can, you know, I think it's really no uh, secret that we kind of do what we feel is best for our customers. Um, we can introduce these products and learn what the customer needs and what the customer wants. And so with this uh, products, these are the first three of this new generation. You know, we're going to be unveiling. Um, headphones and integration into cars and things like that as future happens. And absolutely there will be um, variants that we'll be releasing to address some of those uh, needs. But for today uh, and for the foreseeable future, uh, if you're gonna be using 791s or 591s or outdoor speakers like our 251s or Free Space 51s, then the SA5 is gonna be what you wanna focus on under the SoundTouch platform. Okay, perfect. And I think we've I think we've hit the end. So we've addressed all the questions. We've uh, reviewed the promo. We've reviewed the uh, the in person sessions that we're hosting at the four locations. So, Rich, do you have anything else you'd like to add before we sign it off? Uh, thank you guys very much for uh, sticking out. I, I know we went over just a minute, but the um, any other questions that you have, uh, email me uh, rich underscore way at bose .com or contact Allnet and they can get you my contact information if they can't address it. Okay, so thank you everyone for uh, joining us on the call today. Also, Walter at our office is uh, put in the extra hours and he now has all of the previous sessions archived. For for those of you who have been asking, you know, when will the Samsung session be archived or when will the, you know, whatever, whatever session be archived, they are now all listed. So look for an email from me. I'll probably do it over the weekend. Uh, like a you know a wrap up of third quarter uh, training programs and I think Rich we had you, we had one from you uh, yeah. recently as well so uh, those are all now available on the archive so um, look for an email uh, identifying all the most recent additions to the archive and feel free to share them with your colleagues and if you have any questions about what we're doing or if you have any suggestions on topics you'd like us to cover on the webinar series, feel free to reach out. So again, my email is rick.murphy at allnetdistributing.com. Nearly all of you are probably here because you responded to one of my emails, so hopefully you've got it. Um, everyone have a great day and uh, we'll see you next week. All right, thanks, Rich. Thanks, see you guys.